just start start off really. Mm. <coughs> just going over some of the genetic terms that we mean. So, um, um, so most of you will know that we're made up of these building blocks called cells, and um, every little bit of us is made up of cells. And in the middle of the cells of our body, the ones we look at mostly are the blood cells that we can see under the microscope. In the middle of our cells, the central area that's called the nucleus, that's called the nucleus, um, carries these little particles that are called chromosomes. And that looks, that's what a chromosome looks like. Now what a chromosome is, it's a very, very long string of the genetic material called DNA. So if you took this chromosome and you unraveled it, you just unravel it into a very, very long string of this chemical called DNA. And then every little segment of that DNA, every little section of it would form a different gene or instruction that forms our genetic at chromosomes in cells, what we're really looking at, looking at is little bundles of these genes or instructions. Um, and each gene has a different job to do. So it might tell us what colour our eyes are going to be, or what size our feet are going to be, or how our heart's going to develop. But basically, our instructions are carried in these thousands of genes in the nucleus of the cell. And this is what we see when we're looking down the microscope at the chromosomes. We don't look down microscopes very often nowadays because we've got much more sophisticated techniques of looking at chromosomes. But when we used to do a lot of looking down microscopes, this is what we saw. These are the chromosomes in the nucleus. And if you blow them up a bit more, this is what they all look like. And we all have the same number of chromosomes. We all have 46 chromosomes. And when the uh, cytogenesis who are doing chromosome tests sort those out to have a little look at them and check that we've got the right number. They count them all and they also count to make sure that we've got um, 23 pairs of chromosomes. So we've got 46 all together and they're arranged in pairs and we number them from 1 down to 22 depending on how big they are. And we get one number one from our mum, one number two from our dad, one number one from our mum, one number two from our dad, and so on. So you get half your chromosomes from your mum and half from your dad. And we've got 22 ordinary chromosomes, and then we've got two which are rather special. And these are sex chromosomes which determine whether you're going to be a boy or a girl. And you can see here, what uh, now, is this a boy or a girl? This is a little quiz. So we've got one X chromosome here, and then one little small chromosome called a Y. So is that a boy or a girl? It's a boy, okay? So boys have one X and one Y, and girls have two X chromosomes. So those are the special chromosomes which determine the sex of the person. But we've all got to have 46, and we all need exactly the right amount of chromosome material in order for our health and development to proceed properly. And if you have too much chromosome material, if you've got an extra chromosome, for instance, or if you've got too little chromosome material, then in general you can run into problems if you've got the wrong amount of chromosome material. So now we've done genetics. So we'll go on to talk specifically about XQ2A duplications. So, this is a diagram of the X chromosome. And again, when we're looking at it and analysing it in the laboratory, to know where we're looking at when we can write so that we can write a report to say that there might be something different about it, we give this X chromosome, um, we, we make a, a note of all the different regions on the X chromosome. So we, we usually what we do is we add some dye to the chromosomes and we stain them and you get this nice pattern of stripes on the chromosome and then we give each stripe a number. And then if the chromosome report wants to report that there's something wrong with this region, for instance, it says there's something wrong with the XP21 region. Now we're all interested in this very end of the chromosome here which is called the XQ28 region. 
So when we're talking about XQ28 duplications, we're talking about this region, which is actually quite difficult to see under the microscope because it doesn't stain, as you can see, it's a white area. Um, and that's the region that we're interested in and is involved in the condition that um, some of um, your children have. Now there are lots and lots of different ways that we can look at that XQ28 region and I'm just going to mention some of the techniques because some of you might have been investigated using these different techniques. So I mentioned that nowadays we don't look down microscopes much and indeed if we did just look down the microscope at the chromosomes of someone who had a duplication, an extra bit of XQ28, we probably wouldn't see anything because that bit is so small and so difficult to see that we usually don't pick it up just on routine chromosome tests. So many people with this condition, probably mostly boys, will have had routine genetic tests and they'll have been reported as normal because it was impossible to see um, that difference in the chromosomes. But over the last few years, we've got lots of different techniques now that we can use to look at chromosomes in more detail. And that's why there has been an increase in the number of, of um, boys and some girls diagnosed with an XQ28 duplication just over the past few years, because it's only just now that we've got the technology to be able to diagnose it. So some of the ways we can diagnose it is we can do a, a special chromosome test where we actually light up the end of the X chromosome and you get some little uh, fluorescent dots on, on the X and you can see if you've got some extra X chromosome material. So that's something called fish, the FISH technique and that's sometimes um, used, particularly if you suspect the condition, to confirm it. We can use this technique here. So this technique is looking along the length of the um, of the X chromosome, and you can see that oh, I think my pointer's died. You can see that in the middle of the chromosome there, we're looking at the amount of chromosome material, and you can see there's a region in the middle over there where there's more chromosome material than at the ends, and that's another way of looking at X chromosome duplications, and that's called MLPA. And then this is the, 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 the most sophisticated technique that we're using here, and it's called array CGH, or microarray analysis. And again, this looks along the length of the X chromosome and looks to see how much material is present. And normally you just get a straight line down the middle of the page, but if there's extra material, that line is shifted to one side. Um, and so it's another computer um, assisted way of looking for duplications of the XQ28 region and can also tell you exactly how big that duplication is. So those are the sort of techniques we're using in the laboratory now and it's why we've been able to pick up this condition when previously, years ago, we weren't able to do that. So when you have an extra piece of XQ28, the first thing to say is you can have an extra piece, but it's not the same size extra piece in every person, in every family. It can be very different in size. So I'm just, this is just a diagram along the length of XQ28. And at the bottom, those black lines represent the size of some of the duplications, some of the extra pieces that we see in different families. And you can see that the top family has got a duplication along the entire piece of XQ28. And the middle family has got a duplication which is a bit shorter than that. And the bottom family has just got a tiny duplication, so not very big at all. But, and, and that does make a difference to some extent on how people may be affected because those little um, mustardy coloured lines here that we can see represent the different genes or instructions that are in that region of XQ28. So if you have a big duplication, you've got extra copies of all those different genes along the length of XQ28. If you have just that tiny duplication at the bottom, you've only got extra copies of a couple of genes. So it, it does make a difference which genes are duplicated. And in every different family, 
the duplication is often a different size, so everyone's still an individual because not every child will be exactly the same um, as everyone else. So the thing is, what genes are there that are being affected in that duplication where we've got extra copies of that region of XQ28? So I thought I'd just mention a few of those genes that are affected. Um, because these are the ones that we think are the most responsible for the symptoms. So four of the most important genes in that region are a gene called MECP2. Um, so, and I'll talk about a couple of them in more detail. So um, there's a gene called MECP2, and some of you may have heard of this gene, and this is the gene that's also implicated in a condition which affects girls, which is called Brett syndrome. There's a gene called filamin A in that region. There's a gene called L1 Pan that is also involved in a condition which affects boys and causes a, a large head size. And there's a gene called IRAC. And this gene is interesting because this gene is involved in immune function. And we know that boys with excellent mm -hmm. have difficulties with immunity and tendency to infections. So just to give you a bit more information on a couple of those, um, so this is a little girl here who has a condition called Rett syndrome and one of the characteristic features of Rett syndrome, these are little girls who have um, a severe learning disability and often one of the things that helps you make the diagnosis is they have some repetitive movements with their hands, like hand wringing movements and you can see that little girl doing that there. And she doesn't have an extra copy of MECP2, like boys with a, an XQ28 duplication have, but she's either got MECP2 missing, or she's got a mistake in her MECP2 gene. But it's interesting that you can get some overlap in the symptoms, um, even if, so, so girls with Brett syndrome and boys who have a missing or non-functional copy and boys with an XQ2 28 duplication who have an extra copy do have a little bit of overlap in their symptoms because of the fact that this MECP2 gene is involved. And this gene is important because it's probably the gene which is shared by virtually all boys with an XQ28 duplication and even if you have a very small duplication, and it's also the gene in which there's most research going on at the moment to try and understand the function of the gene and apply the treatments for people who have a problem with that gene. The second gene is interesting because it's a gene called filamin A and it's involved in brain development. And if you have problems with your filamin A, you get a very characteristic appearance on your brain scan, where you get some little nodules along, along the, the edges of the fluid-filled spaces in your brain. And that condition's got a very long name. It's called periventricular nodular heterotopia. But interestingly, some boys who have an XQ28 duplication, when they have brain scans, you can see this appearance on the brain. So some, some of you may have had um, boys who've had MRI scans reported as showing some differences that are consistent with this particular pattern, because one of those genes in the duplication is, is involved in brain development. And the other thing that the gene is involved in is involved in the bowel and the, 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 um, the control of the bowel by the nervous system. And it's thought to be related to the fact that some boys with an XQ28 duplication may have this very troublesome constipation and the bowel not working. So in that duplication may all contribute to the picture of um, a boy who has an XQ28 duplication. So this is a, just a list of some of the symptoms um, which people have seen most often. And my guess is that you would be able to add to these symptoms and comment on these symptoms because you're probably more expert than most of the doctors who've only ever seen a couple of boys with XQ28 duplication. So most of these boys, when they're, when they're born, the thing you notice about them is they're floppy babies and they have low muscle tone. And um, as time goes on, uh, many, 
many of these boys also. Mm -hmm.